channel, my YouTube channel, you'll know that I bought a Porsche Boxster fairly recently, um, a few months ago. I've been having a great time in that and doing some videos in it. Um, and that's been a that's been a, a real pleasure and a joy so far, like I thought it would be. So it's good to get back out in the 993 um, and kind of remind myself just how much I love this car as well. And to talk a wee bit about this car for a change and give it the love and attention it deserves. Good to keep these cars moving, you know, Porsches like to be used. However, having, like I say, bought the Boxer a while ago, a few months ago, and I've been really busy with certain other projects. Life has got in the way like it usually does, and I hadn't actually driven this car for a couple of months, so I was a wee tiny bit nervous about how it might, you know, how it might go when I tried to start it. I'd actually left the, the battery unconnected rather than leave it on trickle charge. Um, so I simply just get back in, rehook the battery, turn the key, and I'm dead happy to say that the car just burst into life. Uh, on the first turn of the key, which was which was fantastic. Obviously, um, and no one can predict what's going to happen with 993 prices 
or 911 prices or any kind of Porsche prices in the future. Um, it's just it's something that you can make an intelligent guess with, but you can't possibly predict accurately. So one of the ways that we can try and think about what's going to happen with future prices is by looking at the past. And if we go back to 2007 when I bought my first Porsche, and think and talk about a little bit about prices of Porsches back then. Back in 2007, you could buy an N11 from the mid 80s for about 10 and 11 thousand pounds, and that's exactly what I did. Um, you could buy an SC, that's an N11 that came before that, for about eight or nine thousand. Nine six fours around about maybe 13, 14. Um, N11 turbos from the mid 80s and about that time, 2007. A mid 80s N11 turbo would cost you about 18 to 20 thousand pounds, which is crazy when you think about it. Interestingly enough, the 993s were never really cheap. You know, all through this car's history, they, they got to a certain level, which I would say back then was probably maybe 17 grand roughly in the UK, and um, they kind of got to that level and didn't really go below it. Some cars went a lot below that. Some 911s went cheaper than that, but 993s didn't, interestingly enough. They always kind of held their value quite well, even when they were cheap. I'm just going to pull on here so we can get a wee chat about this. So yeah, 993s were never dirt cheap like some Porsches seemed to be. So I think that sort of tells you something. Um, there's a lot of reasons for that that we'll discuss. In uh, 2007, an N11 Targa Sport, an 86. Um, a fantastic car. And that was mid-2007. Obviously, a year and a half after that, we had the uh, global financial crash, and that had quite a big impact on used Porsche prices. Um, and obviously, it had an impact on assets across the, the world. Uh, people were selling off uh, liquidating assets like houses and property and businesses and that kind of thing to repay debts. And Porsches got really, really cheap, just like everything did for a short so time. After that, things kind of more, more or less stayed the same. To around about 2013, um, 2014, if I recall correctly, and used cars in general and, and Porsches, air-cooled air N11s, I remember, um, took a bit of a, a, a spike in prices. You know, there's, there's various um, theories behind why this happened. It could be a culmination of things, you know. I think it was um, it was a big anniversary for Porsche at the time and people were starting to kind of appreciate um, these kind of cars a wee bit more because cars were coming a bit more analog, uh, a bit more digital and people were harking back to um, to these cars that they, they dreamt about when they, were, when they were young and they were possibly at an age where they could maybe afford it. There was a wee change with the pensions rules as well and people had a wee bit more disposable income all of a sudden, it seemed. So the prices took a took um, a claim back in 2013-2014 and, you know, um, a lot of people did quite well to, to be honest with cars because the special editions, the rare special editions, really did take a, a, a massive spike in, in value and some of the prices you were seeing were, were through the roof, it was crazy. An interesting point in time as well, I mean, um, prices more or less started to just cling gradually and had been doing for quite a while, and then the uh, the global pandemic occurred, the uh, um, COVID nineteen, and everyone started thinking that the uh, the world was going to you know a bit like the financial crash, that pri house prices were going to plummet, and businesses were going to you know be sold, no one's going to buy cars, and the value was going to plummet as well. But it, it had been unprecedented, so no one really knew what was going to happen. These were just people's thoughts at the time, but very interestingly, what actually happened was. It just the, the price of cars um, shot up, and there was there was quite a few reasons for it. You know, um, people, car man, new car manufacturers stopped making new cars, thinking that people weren't going to buy them, and semiconductors became in short supply. But the weird thing is, what actually happened is because there was no, no new cars coming through, and people still needed cars, then the used car market um, shot up again and even the, the new car market, so it was a, a really bizarre scenario where you had like dealers who were willing to pay you well over what they sold you the car for to buy it back from you. That includes post dealers. You know, talking about maybe five, six, seven, ten thousand pounds of a difference, people were, 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 were making a, a profit, if you like, on, the, on their car by selling it back to the dealer. Um, used car prices and post prices 
were, were back on the rise again. No one could ever have foreseen that. Um, so if we look back, you know, we've had recessions, we've had um, global pandemics, we've had wars, we've had financial crashes, you know, and the, the price of cars generally through all this time has steadily climbed over the long term. So if we go from 2007 to present day, I mean, these cars are, like this one are generally trebled in value. Um, more special editions, Turbo 911 Turbo S's or 993 Turbo S, for example, um, has really shot up in value. So, you know, but some have claimed more than others, like 964s, the car that came before this one, um, even basic C2s and C4s, they claimed at a faster rate than 993s for some reason. A um, couple of possibilities for that. You had companies like Singer who were buying up quite a lot of 964s and uh, customising them and selling them for, for quite a lot of money, which can increase the, the appeal of the, the 964. The 964s are a beautiful thing as well. It's the last of the kind of classic 911 shape with torpedo front wings. Um, some people really do appreciate that, but it's a beautiful thing. And the, the 993 is a Kirby beautiful thing as well, albeit the front wings are a little bit more, more curved. Um, but the 964 uh, really became a, a very sought after, after machine. But I mean, it's crazy to think about it, you know. I mean, even not so long ago, you could buy things like a, a, a GT3 RS or a GT2 for, you know, something like 40, 50 grand. Now it's double that. So, values, car values are, are difficult things to predict. And if we look at the past, we can see over the long term, they have steadily climbed. So, yeah, prices have steadily climbed over the, over the long term. So that teaches us that if you were to buy an old air-cooled N11 um, and keep it for the long term, the chances are it's going to either hold its money or it's going to creep up a little bit. Um, chances that it could even creep up quite a big bit. Uh, you're going to have um, uh, maintenance costs to offset all this. And like I always say, I mean, these cars can cost you, I don't know, maybe 1,500 quid to 2,000 pounds a year um, on top of services and, and uh, tax and insurance and MOT and things like that. So and you're not always going to spend that, but some years you might, some years you won't. Uh, these cars are very, 919 and especially, is a very strong, well-built, well-engineered, over-engineered car. That's one of the magical things about this car. Um, so when you do buy parts, they last a long time. They're ex often expensive to buy uh, for suspension components and things like that, but they do last very well. Ordinary servicing isn't particularly expensive in these cars. So you're going to have, you're going to have um, maintenance costs regardless. So you're going to kind of offset that against any kind of potential appreciation that the car does or doesn't make over the long term. And that's why I always say, you know, don't go into it thinking it's going to make you a lot of money. It might not. Go into it thinking you're going to buy the car that you want, that you love, that you really, really want. Um, it's got the want it factor for you. And you're going to enjoy it and use it and hope that it keeps its value or doesn't depreciate too much. If you go in with that mindset, then anything after that's a bonus, and you may even be pleasantly surprised. It's interesting, whenever a car, the car market, um, or these Porsches go up in value, you'll always have people saying that it's a bubble, and that's um, it's going to pop, it's going to pop, it's going to bust, and the prices are going to come plummeting down. It's not happened yet. Uh, you know, people have been crying that for quite a long time, and it's just, the bubble's going to bust, and things are going to go back to the way the way they were back in the, you know, back at 2005, 2006. I don't think so. I think if you're holding off waiting for a, a 993 to, to plummet in value, I don't see it happening, guys. You know, um, obviously, you might think I've got a vested interest in saying that, but I'm trying to be honest. I'm trying to be truthful and give you a completely balanced uh, opinion on that. It's not happened in the past. Um, I don't see these cars going back to being 17, 18,000 pounds like they were at one point in time. It's very, very unlikely. Um, so, any kind of perceived bubbles, I don't think so. It, what, what, what happens is they climb up a little bit, they go down a little bit, and then they slowly climb and slowly go down. But if you watch that trajectory, it kind of it kind of slowly climbs. That's not to say you couldn't have something that happens in the world that doesn't, you know, that makes the the, the classic car market uh, again crash. It's happened before. Some people might argue that the classic car market could crash just like it did in the eighties. That is possible. Um, again, no one can predict the future, but I would say it's quite unlikely that 911s, the 993 is going to go back to being what it was, um, you know, years ago and back to being 16, 17, 18,000 pounds. It's very unlikely. If there was a massive change in the, the value of these cars, it, it might just dip a little bit. It's my personal opinion. So don't go thinking you're going to, you're, you might hold off waiting to, to see if these cars 
uh, come, come down a lot in value in the hopes that they do so you can pick one up. It's unlikely guys, you know, you're probably best just thinking that the price is what it is and you'll get your money back hopefully when you sell it. Um, you know, you can pay, pay £50,000 plus for one of these cars now. Uh, tur turbos are a lot more. The you know, special editions like the C2S or the 4S are a lot more. And that's that's basically how it is, you know. So if you want to, to park some money for a while in a car, then some, something like this is probably a good place to put it in the hope that you get it back one day and you can use it in the meantime and enjoy the pleasure of ownership. So the purpose of this video is to try and give you my, my instincts and my thoughts on the, the 993 values in general and uh, where I think it's headed and I hope you can get some kind of insight and value from this to give you an idea of um, how, how you might consider buying one of these and what it might, the implications might mean for you um, financially.